Hi everyone, this is Amy, and in this recording I'm going to show you how to make a simple but elegant looking book that you can use to put your students' writings in so that they can have a keepsake of their, um, their language exercises. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use Word for this project, and you can use this whether you're on a Mac or a PC. I'm on a Mac, so the layout of Word is a little bit different, but you can still use the same um, basic steps. So I'm going to go ahead and open Word. I'm going to start a new project here. We'll return to that in just a minute. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm actually going to go into the Project Gallery so that I can get a different layout from the normal. And I'm going to choose the Word Publishing layout. Um, sometimes you can actually get Publisher for Word, which would also be an option that you could use. So we're going to go ahead and open a Word Publishing document. Now you see this looks a little bit different than a normal uh, document. You can choose a number of different publication layouts, um, but for me, I just like to do a real simple uh, book layout. So we're going to, we can look at the publication templates here really quick. These are the different publication templates, but I like to do a, um, a half book, which would be half of an eight and a half by eleven page and you use a full eight and a half by eleven page and then fold it in half and it creates a nice little book. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to page setup and we're going to do a US letter okay? but we're going to do a landscape orientation. Okay? So now you see that that switches it the other way of course so that we have a book layout. Now the first thing that we want to do is make it really easy for us to put the words in without having to figure out where our pages are. So I like to draw in a um, box and so I'm going to use a draw shape and we're just going to use a rectangle shape and I'm going to use that rectangle shape to draw out a box that is the length of my paper but only half, right? only half of the width. So we have 11 uh, inch paper, so that would be five and a half. And now remember, five and a half is where the binding is going to go. So you're actually going to want to come in a quarter of an inch to a half an inch so that you're not going to have um, issues when you fold the, the book in half. Now, obviously, this is a big blue sp Square. You can leave that as is if you want to, or you can change the colors uh, in your color palette. Um, I like to adjust the transparency so that it's just a background instead of being um, instead of being so uh, intrusive. So this way it's a nice um, pale background in the back. And also I like to keep with a gray scale so that we don't have to worry about um, I worry about printing. If you're printing at school, usually they don't like, like it when you print in color. So I like to use a gray scale or pick black and gray as my colors. And that way you don't have to worry about um, about printing. We're going to take away this line also that goes around the edge. Okay, so now you have this squared off and what I like to do is just take that and then copy it and paste it onto the next pages. Okay, so we can go back and we can insert a new page, right? And then I can take my square and I can just hit copy, reposition it so that it fits, and then I can hit uh, paste again and have a second one. So now you can see that I have two pages onto one page, and this will make a nice um, two pages of my book. Now remember in a book you're working backwards, so the title page, this will be our title page, and I'll write that in a text box here. Okay. 
right? If you didn't see that, the text box tool is right here, and you just draw a text box and type in your text, and you can adjust the text like you normally would. So we'll have a title page, and the title page is going to be on the right side of your first page. And we need to think backwards because when we fold the book, that's how it's going to work. So this page over here, I'll do another text box here, this page is actually going to be um, the back cover. Okay, You don't have to label it, but I'm just labeling it to show you guys. So this will be our back cover, and you can choose to leave that blank, or you can choose to put a picture on it, or if you need it for one of the poems, you can do that also, but I like to leave it blank. Then the first or the second page will be your first page. So this here is going to be your first page. But this one over here, this side of your book, this is actually going to be your last page. So when you print them double-sided, okay, you're going to want to print these double-sided. Uh, when you print them, then they will actually show up and look like a book. And this last page will be on the opposite side of your back cover. Okay? So when I'm creating a book, I like to leave the last page blank and only use it if I have to. Okay, in case um, you need it for an even number of poems or whatever you have. Uh, I use I leave it last though because if I have an odd number of, pa of poems then I won't use the last page and I'll just have a blank half of the page. Um, so leave this one blank okay, until it is needed. Okay, so then we have the first and the second page. Now you can continue using insert new page, okay? And you can continue to do the same thing. So we'll put in our little our little shadow boxes to show us where the text goes. And we'll position them in the corners. Okay? And this way remember the um, folding line is going to be right down the middle here. So you have one page here and one page here. So this will be our first page, and then this one will be our second page, and this will be the third to last page, okay? So you have to remember to kind of think backwards on these. So if you want to be creative, um, remember I suggested this for odes that your students might write uh, in your language classes. If you want to be creative, I like to import pictures and use the pictures to fill in the backgrounds as well. So in order to do that, we're going to make this box uh, not have any fill, okay? So it's still, you can still see the box here, okay? It's still shadowed and you can see it, um, but it's not taking up any space, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to insert a picture. Okay, and you can do that from Clipart or from a file. A great place to get pictures that you can use that are free images that you don't have to pay for uh, is Microsoft Office Clipart Online. So if you can't find the picture in your Clipart already, you can go into their online files and find a new, a new one. Now for these, I like to use um, any number of pictures that you want, okay? So if they're writing an ode to the road, you can find a picture of a road okay, and put it in line with and make it big enough okay, to take up some space. Then we need to do a couple of editing things. First, I'm going to format the picture. Okay? I'm going to make it a Oops. All right, I'm going to make it a grayscale picture so it'll change to black and white so we don't have printing issues. And then, oops, and then I'm going to arrange it and send it to the back. That way it goes behind my writing, right? And then it'll be behind the writing. And then you can also make it transparent so it not, is not taking up too much visual space. All right, I hope this was helpful. See you later.